Good afternoon, investors. This video is to go over some protocols and requirements because your property was built before 1978 and may or may not contain lead. So let me start off with a little story. A few years ago, I was in the office about midday and I got a call from one of our other office suites that said, there's a person in there, you need to come down, they're asking a lot of questions. So I come down and this gentleman walked in off the street and started questioning everyone. Where are your files? What is this? What is that? He never introduced himself, offered to shake a hand, offered his name, nothing. So when I said simply, who are you? Why are you here? He pulled out a badge, put it in my face and said, my name is such and such from the EPA. And your failure to answer questions could be construed as impeding a federal investigation. Do you want to challenge me and get a felony? It was that irrational, that abrupt, and welcome to dealing with the government. So after about the next three hours of trying to talk myself out of a pickle that I didn't even know I was in, when someone had no warrant, had no appointment, had not even introduced themselves, I finally got to the point where I felt like we could get into whatever this compliance was that we had never heard about. So fast forward a few years later, and that compliance from the federal government has continued to increase. Now, some states have their own compliance departments like Oregon, Washington, California. Some states do not, like Texas, and they rely on the federal government, which the EPA office in Texas is in Dallas, to enforce their regulations throughout the state. So what do they do? They show up at your office and they say, show us your files. What happens if you don't have those files? Well, tens of thousands in fines if you're lucky and imprisonment. So let's talk over what the qualifications are to even fit the parameters for these compliance needs and why it's important to you as an investor. If your house was built before 1978, there is a possibility that lead-based paint is somewhere on the property. Now, if it was built in the 1920s, that was the peak of lead use, and there's almost guaranteed to be lead on the property somewhere. If it was built in the 60s or 70s, there may be a 5 to 20% chance that lead paint is somewhere on the property. So the government says that if we disturb that lead paint at all, which could mean dust, paint chips, or anything of the sort, larger than a certain area, then we have to follow certain protocols. So the first thing we do is say, is your property built before 1978? If it's not, not an issue. If it is, then we have to go out to the property and test for lead. If we test for lead on the work areas only, not around the entire property, we have to drive there, we have to have test strips, we have to have certifications, we have to have documentation, we have to keep those for three years, go back to the office, document it all. It's quite a process. Then if it tests negative, we're in the clear and we can proceed with work. We have to have a certification posted and a physical copy on the site that is our certification saying that we are the people responsible for this work and you can call us if you need anything. Yes, an online copy is not good enough if a field inspector walks out. They want an actual piece of paper. Welcome to dealing with the government once again. So let's say it tests negative. We complete the work and we go on. Everything is great. We document it. We seal it up and we go forward. Let's say it tests positive. What happens there? Well, we've got a couple challenges, to be honest with you, because we cannot disturb that lead-based paint dust, particles, chips, anything like that, whether it's power washing a deck, eaves, siding, none of that can be done unless it's a certified firm that does that work. So if you want to know kind of more about this, there is a pamphlet you can Google called Renovate Right, done by the EPA. You Google those words and you're going to get a copy of it. Take this as a notice that you should be familiar with it. There is a laundry list of firms, quote, certified by the EPA in our area. Isn't that great? It is until you call them for services. No one on that list actually wants to perform by EPA standards. Why? Because it's such a headache. Nobody wants to deal with it. And so they've gone to the class. They've paid all their money to the government. They've got the certification because they wanted to be in compliance to know what not to do because people will physically show up at your office and threaten you. However, they don't want to do the work. So we can call down this list as much as we like. And in the Austin scenario, we may find no one that can do that work. And so we've got a couple options in at that point. If we can find a certified firm, we're going to oversee it. 
orchestrate it, get our guys to manage it. We have to then get all the documentation from them, make sure their certificate's on file, ours is on file, make sure everything is wrapped up and stored for three years after it's done so you're not in trouble and we're not in trouble. And that's groovy. But if we cannot find a firm, we've only got a couple of choices left. One of those is to not do the work, to patch it, to go over it, to paint over it, to delay it. We're not disturbing it. So that is all completely fine and dandy. The other is we may reach out to you as an owner because if we can't find anybody to do this work, it's your property. There are no resources available. It becomes your option on what you want to do with that work. Now, we've got to be honest. We do not recommend that you oversee this work on your own because it is against federal law. However, why in the world aren't you hearing more about this? Well, because people on the street are simply doing what they want to do. Because if you're a company, or if you're a representative of something, the federal government believes that you are a really good target because you can touch all these people, right? But if you're an individual homeowner, it is really unattractive politically to go after you as an individual because you're going to make the news and the big bad government's after you and why are they picking on you? Now, let's be honest, somebody in Texas with a few phone calls will be happy to replace your eaves, your siding, do all this work and won't ask two questions because the regulation is of that nature, we'll say. But if you get caught, it's going to be between you and the APA because we're not going to orchestrate if there's lead found and we can't use a certified firm. We're not going to pay that vendor. We're not going to check on that vendor. We cannot be anywhere near that in order to stay in business and stay out of prison. And so please take this as a kind message that if we had a great solution for you and we could pick up the phone and call somebody, even if they were more expensive and get this done for you, we would have already done it. We wouldn't even be having this video made. But the truth is, it's, that's not really the environment we're in. In five or 10 years, when there becomes a market for it and the EPA continues to tighten the screws, I really hope there's more firms willing to do this. We're actually working with one of our vendors today to get them not only certified, but in compliance so they have more business and so that we can follow all the regulations. But until then, we may be coming back to you as the owner and saying, hey, we can clean up everything except these items because there's no options to do so. Now, if you want to do it on your own, I don't want to hear about it. The question arose in one of my courses of, does that make us liable? I think the government could look at anything any way they wanted and say so, but I'm telling you right now that I'm not as a company, we're not going to be able to touch anything. And therefore, I feel like that's a reasonable defense. I'm informing you as an owner that Renovate Right pamphlet is out there. It gives you all the instructions you need, and you're not supposed to disturb. Are you ready for it? Here's what you waited for the whole video. An area on the inside of a property greater than six square feet or an area on the exterior of the property greater than 20 square feet if lead is present without following all the compliance procedures. So, Couple questions come up. If I replace a door, it's got a hole in it. Is that a big deal? Well, maybe, maybe not. If I replace just the door, all I'm disturbing is the paint on the hinges, less than six square feet. Now, if I replace the whole door frame, because that's much easier than what most people do, that is more than six square feet inside the house. That's a problem. Also keep in mind that windows are always a problem. Uh, they're excluded from the exemption. So they're included in the compliance. So if you replace the window frames, that's just going to have to be in compliance. The window panes, not an issue, right? Let's go to the exterior. Eaves, siding, all that stuff. Unless you're patching a hole this big, if you're replacing planks, it is greater than 20 square feet, and that's a problem. So the compliance procedures you can dig into online, but basically nothing can be visible once the job is completed. You have to use six feet of plastic inside, plus another two feet. And the outside, you have to use like 10 feet and 12 feet. Take this, wrap it all up, and believe it or not, it can go in your household trash after you're done. I'm not saying any of these regulations make sense, ladies and gents. I am just saying that they will physically walk into your office because it happened to us. So give us questions if you have anything. We've got workflows in place. We've got tracking procedures now. We're training the entire staff on it as we speak. And we're going to really do our best to stay in compliance so that the government doesn't come back to your property until you have to redo everything as well that you've done. But this is kind of new for all of us. Even though it's been out there, the screws keep getting tighter and tighter. And so that's why we're sharing this information for you. Again, if some of this, any of this doesn't make sense, we ask you to ask our staff, meet with our staff, ask anybody on our team so that we can tighten up everything we have with every question you give us and every concern. 
because our objective is to always get it right and do the best we can. So with your collaboration, we can make that happen and make your property as profitable and safe as possible. Talk to you soon. As always, don't forget, we've got an email called wecare at 1836pm.com. If you have any questions and you forget everything else or you can't reply to this video, you can always shoot us an email there. We'll be happy to respond. Thank you again for trusting us with your properties. We know it's one of your life's biggest investments, and we're here to help you get the greatest return if possible. Have a great day.